Yesterday, all hell broke loose on Twitter when the largest Marvel Snap creator shared a deck that people are saying isn't his. This creator was Cozy Snap. He is the biggest Marvel Snap creator with over 125,000 subscribers on YouTube. Each of his videos gets tens of thousands of views. Yesterday, he uploaded a video titled The Ultimate 70% Win Rate Sarah Deck and shared it on Twitter. Once the tweet went up, many people started pointing out that this was a deck that a much smaller creator cooked up almost a week ago. This smaller creator is Revis. Revis is probably somebody that you've never heard of, but he's an amazing Marvel Snap player and known for cooking up new innovative decks. Revis has won Marvel Snap tournaments and he streams regularly over on Twitch to his small audience. A lot of people are mad at Cozy for not tagging Revis or mentioning him in the video. But then there are many who think the idea of deck credit is a silly idea in the first place. Deck credit is an extremely polarizing topic in the Marvel Snap community. And today I wanted to lay out my thoughts in a video essay format so we can have a discussion. One of the main reasons that this topic is so polarizing is because it comes down to questions about morality and overall creator etiquette. There are one of two camps that you fall into when the idea of deck credit comes around. If you're in the first camp, you argue that Marvel Snap is a 12 card game and there's only so much you could do with decks. You believe that this is going to happen regularly and sometimes it's impossible to know where a deck originated. So it makes it even sillier to even attempt to give credit. Now, if you're in the second camp, you believe that creators should at least attempt to give deck credit when possible. You believe if you didn't personally sit down in the deck editor and put these 12 cards together, you should at least try to credit someone else. And some believe that at the very least, you should say that this deck was not your personal creation. I'm personally in the second camp, but I'm gonna do my best to steel man the other arguments, and that gives us a great place to start. Do I think Cozy is an evil person looking to steal decks and take credit for them? Absolutely not. And something I wanna make very clear is that I don't think people should be attacking Cozy either. There are ways to have conversations without attacking someone or being part of a dog pile. While it may be unintentional, deck credit is important for a multitude of reasons. Most of you watching this video aren't content creators, so you don't know what it takes to grow. Yes, it takes a lot of hard work, but it also takes a lot of luck. Luck comes in the form of the YouTube algorithm blessing you and putting your content in front of a ton of potential viewers. Luck can also come from a larger creator sharing your content or rating your Twitch stream to introduce you to new audiences. Yes, there's a lot of skill involved in making good content. You have to know how to make good content that keeps viewers engaged. You also have to make eye-catching thumbnails and titles that people want to click. But I've been in the YouTube game for years now, and I know many creators who do everything right but still can't get traction because luck isn't on their side. Despite what some of you may think about Jeff Hoagland, he's humble when it comes to being one of the top creators. He's under no delusion that he did this all on his own. Many things lined up to get him in the position that he's in today as one of the top Marvel Snap Twitch streamers and YouTubers. The story goes that Jeff shares is that back in the day when he played Magic the Gathering, he streamed at the same time as one of the biggest Magic streamers. That streamer ended up getting a new job and had to stop streaming during that same time. Since Jeff was one of the only other people streaming during that time, the viewers of that original creator ended up naturally finding him and that started the momentum. He shares this story to showcase how luck played a role along with his hard work. I also respect Jeff because he makes it a point to raid smaller creators when he signs off for the day to hopefully give others the opportunity he's been given. I have a full-time job that I love and creating content is more of just a hobby for me. But for many, making content full-time is the dream. So why not help smaller creators when you can? One of the primary reasons not even attempting to give deck credit is an issue is because it literally takes minimal effort to tag someone in a tweet or shout them out in a video. What really blows my mind about this whole thing is how many progressive liberals we have in this community that argue against deck credit. And I'm sorry for getting political for a moment here, but progressives and liberals understand that people don't have the same opportunities as others 
based on a variety of factors that are completely out of control. Whether it's their race, gender, sexual preferences, or simply the family that they were born into, they were born into the wrong situation. Meanwhile, the number one predictor of future wealth in the United States as an adult is being born into a wealthy family. Those of us on the left fight for a more equal society where everyone gets a chance. We argue that the rich should be taxed more and those funds should go to help those who are the less fortunate who weren't born into the ideal situations. We believe in equity because without it, many people will never get an opportunity to succeed. With that being said, do you see why it blows my mind that people argue against debt credit? It's such a simple thing to do that can help out small creators struggling to get views and people are saying that it's not a good thing. If I'm going to steel man the opponent's argument for a minute, yes, debt credit in a 12 card game can seem silly, but we're also a community where people name decks after who they saw post them. When people reach infinite, they tag whoever they found the deck from to boost that creator. You have no idea how many times people have tagged me after they hit infinite or win infinity conquest and they share the deck. And half the time, I'm not even the one who created it and sometimes I have to correct them. It happens all the time. So the people who are arguing against deck credit are also arguing against reality. Going back to Jeff, he made a pretty funny, yes, hilarious video a while back when he got accused of quote unquote, stealing a deck from TLSG. It was some kind of junk deck. And as Jeff goes back through the timeline, he found that others posted the deck before TLSG. And then Jeff actually finds that he posted the deck even months and months and months and months and months before everybody else and TLSG. While this video Jeff created was to highlight why it's silly to give deck credit, it goes back to my personal leftist values. Let's say Elon Musk steals an idea from Jeff Bezos without giving credit. I really do not care. But let's say Elon Musk takes an idea from a low level employee. That's a different story altogether. Many people need to realize that there's something called the Matthew effect and it keeps unfortunate people at the bottom and the privileged people at the top. In a Science Direct article, they explain the Matthew effect in the social sciences as follows. The Matthew effect refers to a pattern in which those who begin with advantage accumulate more advantage over time, and those who begin with disadvantage become more disadvantaged over time. The result is ever widening differences between the advantage and disadvantage. This simple theory has been supported in many domains of life. So going back to the Marvel Snap community, you need to be blind to not recognize the clicks of larger creators of Marvel Snap. The same top creators collab with each other, boosting their already large audiences. Even when you look at the Marvel Snap official events, like the Conqueror's events, they base a lot of who they invite based on who gets the most views. All of this increases the Matthew effect even more. When is the last time that you saw one of the top creators collab with someone smaller or lesser known? If we're being honest, Jeff Hoagland seems to be the only one even trying to do this. So it's a little understandable that people got upset with Cozy being such a large creator, in fact, the number one creator, and he doesn't even attempt to tag a smaller creator who initially popularized the deck. But the question is, did Cozy even know that Revis posted the deck? Although I'm not saying Cozy is an evil person, I want to do a quick thought experiment with all of you watching this video. What if, just what if, there was a Marvel Snap creator who wanted to get big, but they didn't want to put in all the effort? One day, they get a genius idea, a little twisted idea. They're going to intentionally seek out smaller creators who share deck lists, and then this creator is going to make videos on them. When they do this, they pass these decks off as their own. They say to their audience, this is my personal brew and it's the best deck in the game. Over time, this creator starts growing and growing and growing. They become known as this amazing deck creator in the community. And as they grow, they keep intentionally taking decks that they see other posts and they continue to pass these decks off as their own. So let me ask you this. If this was the case, would you say that this person is acting in a morally sound way?
I'd bet good money that many of you don't think so. The biggest issue that we have with the debt credit debate is something called plausible deniability. Plausible deniability is the ability to deny any involvement in illegal or unethical activities because there is no clear evidence to prove involvement. So the question is, how could you ever prove someone is a bad actor when it comes to stealing a deck? If we as a community don't set any sort of standard for this or even bring it up as a topic, we're putting up a big old sign that says, come take ideas from others and profit from it, and we won't even try to hold you accountable. Like I said, I'm going to steal man the counter arguments. So let's dive deeper into this story of Revis and Cozy. On Christmas Eve, Revis shared the deck for the first time on Twitter, along with a video. This was the first time I saw the deck, and so did many others. At the time of recording this, the tweet that Revis posted has 377 likes, 21 retweets, 182 bookmarks, and 51.4 thousand views. For comparison, the next deck that Revis shared on Twitter only got 15,000 views. That is 36,000 less views than the Sarah deck, so it didn't get nearly as much reach. Cozy shared the exact same deck five days later, and as you can see, he already has over 76,000 views. In Cozy's defense, and he mentioned this in a reply tweet. On December 23rd, a day before Revis shared the deck, Cozy said that Mobius was a card that was being slept on. So let's try to give Cozy the benefit of the doubt. Let's say Cozy didn't see Revis's tweet. What are some other explanations? It's possible that on his Mobius kick, Cozy randomly saw this deck on Twitter, tested it out, and loved it. He didn't know Revis shared it days ago, so he didn't give him credit. But this also brings up the question, why didn't he credit whoever he saw share it? It's also possible that Cozy went to untapped.gg and saw this list performing well and decided to make a video on it. On untapped, you have no clue who the source is. But then the question is, why didn't he credit untapped and get them some additional traffic? And it does go off on a side rant too. If you're a creator who found a deck on untapped, I personally think the same thing. You should credit them as well. They provide a valuable service to the community and they stay in business by getting exposure and signups. So people should boost them when possible. So if you're finding decks on untapped, say, hey, this is the site I found it to get them some more traffic so they can stay in business and keep providing us a service. But anyways, another explanation is after thinking about Mobius being slept on, is it possible that Cozy cooked up an identical 12 card Sarah list? I personally think that this is the least likely scenario. Yes, Cozy loves him some Sarah and has made many videos on Sarah lists in the past, but this list stands out because it has some unique choices. This deck uses cards like Gladiator, Maximus, and Legion. I'm pretty in tune with the Marvel Snap meta, and I can't remember anyone using these cards in a Sarah list until Revis. And why is that? There was a recent OTA that made these cards a lot better. The last time Cozy posted a Sarah deck was three months ago. The deck was even still using one drops like Spider-Ham and Kitty Pride, whereas this new deck has no one drops. And that is something else that makes this deck pretty unique. There's not a single one drop in the whole list. Again, I'll give Cozy the benefit of the doubt that he didn't know that this list came from Revis, but I find it difficult to believe that Cozy opened up the deck editor and came up with these 12 cards. Going back to my buddy, Jeff Hoagland. So he is an anti-deck credit person and brought up a great point in this tweet. He was saying that he pretty much had 11 out of the 12 cards in his deck editor. While I understand what Jeff is saying, he's a completely different story in a whole different world. With Jeff, we see how the sausage is made. Jeff streams five days a week and intentionally brews off meta decks. This is part of his personal brand. We watch him to see what kind of new innovative decks that he cooks up regularly. 
So if I saw Jeff share the list, I wouldn't say a word. In fact, if anybody accused Jeff of stealing a deck like this, I'd be one of the first person to stand up and say, this is a coincidence. Jeff has a long track record of being someone who personally cooks up decks. Now, bear with me because this is where I need to get a little bit mean, but I'll try to do it as nicely as possible. So for those of you who don't remember, in the recent Marvel Snap Conquerors event, we had to get together as a community and call out both Second Dinner and Tribe Gaming for the lack of diversity in the event. Tribe put together the event and only invited one woman to it. As a community, we told them that we wanted more diversity, and it was only due to two men dropping out that two additional women were added to the event. During this time, the second dinner community manager said that in addition to views, they took into consideration skill in the form of Marvel snap points. This was immediately called out because Alex Cochia was on the list, and he's not the best Marvel snap player, and some female creators actually outrank him regularly. Now, I apologize if this comes off as mean, all right? But we need to speak the truth. I personally love Alex. He's a super nice guy, and he even rated one of my streams, all right? But people knew something was up because Alex isn't known for being a quote-unquote top Marvel Snap player. This is the same situation with Cozy. Cozy is an amazing content creator, and I wish that I could make videos the way that he does, but Cozy is not known for being a top Marvel Snap player. He only recently even started streaming again. Unlike Jeff, we don't see Cozy regularly brewing decks. We don't see that process. So when he posts a deck that a small creator just popularized and doesn't give them credit, I think it's justifiable for some of us to get a little bit upset. To conclude this video essay, I want to reiterate that I don't think Cozy is a bad person, but I do think we collectively need to hold second dinner and top creators to a much higher standard. Cozy makes amazing content, but he is also a conventionally attractive white dude. Based on how he looks and his social position, he was in a great place to take off as a Marvel Snap creator. He's now the top Marvel Snap creator, and none of us can even remember the last time that he helps boost a smaller creator. Like, don't you think that might be an issue? He doesn't share content from small creators, and in this case, he didn't even try to see if there was a smaller creator that he could credit with this deck, at least until after Twitter started getting upset with him. Once all the hubbub started stirring on Twitter, Cozy then reached out to Revis and offered to link him in the video description. But again, this isn't just about Cozy. In my opinion, it is morally right to help out the less fortunate if you have abundance. In the case of content creation, it's extremely simple. Nobody is asking the top creators with tens of thousands of subscribers and views to schedule a collab, but I don't think it is too much to ask them to do the bare minimum by shouting out or tagging smaller creators, especially if it's a deck that you're making a video on. All right, everybody, thanks for watching if you made it all the way through this video. This is something that comes up a lot. I've had a lot of thoughts on my mind and I'm constantly debating with people on Twitter about it. So I just wanted to structure it. And since I'm a writer, I wanted to write it all out, to script it and do a video essay on it. So again, again, I know I said it 50,000 times. <clears throat> I don't think that Cozy is a bad person. I don't think that this was done nefariously or intentionally, but I do think that with minimal effort, people up top can bring others up with them. I think it is just like such a small ask. It is just such a very tiny, tiny ask. I don't think it's crazy to try to get them to do this. And I don't think it's right to give everybody a pass and just say, don't even attempt to tag people and share. Like we're a community, we should all be boosting each other up. It is very little and it is not taking anything away from you by shouting out other smaller creators, all right? Like I am much smaller than a lot of these other people that we're talking about and I do my best to boost up other people whenever I can, especially if I'm testing out a deck that I saw that they shared. All right, but anyways, that's all I got for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, ring that notification bell. And I just posted the new uh, season pass giveaway over on Twitter, so follow me over there. Everything you need is linked down in the uh, description below. Thanks again so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.